Hey there, back for another episode of Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. We're going to start with some epidemiology. So this is the most recent data that I could find of the top 10 leading causes of death here in the United States. So as you can see, heart disease is the highest killer at 24.3% of the population who's dying. Um, and then cancer is very, very uh, slightly below that at 21.4% for males. And then for females, it's 21.8 and 20.5% respectively. So that ends up translating to total deaths of 460,950 people per year dying from cancer. And then I'm going to go back into uh, looking at cancer types that are actually killing people. I got a little bit newer data here. I got 2020. Uh, these all come from the CDC. As you can see, lung and lung cancer, basically, um, it's lumping together bronchial cancers, but you know that's going to be under the umbrella of lung cancer, um, killed 136,000 of those people. Um, the next highest risk of death was colon and rectal cancer, uh, followed by pancreatic, breast, prostate, and liver. And then if you, I, I went ahead and highlighted this um, because it's going to help me make my next points. As you can see, all other cancers, all other, uh, not listed on this top 10, accounts for less than 5% of all cancer deaths. And, you know, this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this series is that I want you to get more sun exposure. Okay. And so again, all other cancers besides these, besides these six counts for less than 5% of cancer deaths. All right. However, it's showing that insufficient sunlight may be responsible for uh, 340,000 deaths in the United States and 480,000 deaths each year in Europe. So when you take into account the amount of excess deaths of the ones here and less than less than 5% of all cancers are not these six, which means that the things that people are really concerned about, melanoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and basal cell carcinoma, account for a a minuscule fraction of people who actually pass away, right? They they look at the number of premature deaths due to cancer due to low UVB exposure, um, and that was 21.7 thousand, and it was broken down by ethnicity. This is a, this is one looking at uh, lymphoma risk, whether it be non-Hodgkin's or Hodgkin's lymphoma, and the higher the sun exposure, the lower risk you have of those cancers. The higher uh, amount of sunlight you have definitely outweighs the risk of skin cancer. That's very clear, and even if you were to get a melanoma, believe it or not, it's actually protective that you get uh, sun exposure, even if you have melanoma. Melanoma, if you get intermittent exposure where you have a high chance of burning because you don't have what you know people call a solar callus or you don't have sufficient you know protection from melanin, will increase your risk for melanoma. But if you get kind of heavy exposure, <clears throat> regular exposure, you actually have a lower and then normal risk of getting melanoma by about 14% lower than normal risk. Basically, we are making recommendations to people that keep them out of the sun, which is what's increasing our risks of cancer of all types to help protect against, you know, probably 1% or less of all cancer deaths when all of these other cancers that are skyrocketing and exploding and killing people uh, throughout the United States and throughout the world are could could be helped. And you know this this is this is a tragedy because we could be preventing a lot of these cancer diagnoses and cancer deaths by just getting outside. And we'll talk about the mechanism of how that work. One of those is vitamin D, uh, but there are others. And I just wanted to put this in here because, you know, when we're looking at data like this and absolute numbers, you know, hundreds of thousands of people per year are dying of cancer. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying from cancers that can be positively affected by getting enough sunlight. And we're worried about cancers that are way less than 5% of the deaths. So just keep that in mind that when I tell you to get sun exposure, it's not because I want to put you at higher risk for anything at all. I want to put you at a lower risk for many things. And, you know, in a previous video I had done, I had looked at other, you know, disease processes that are lowered by UV exposure in particular heart disease, blood pressure, diabetes, I mean, inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, MS, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease, you name it, are all 
uh, inversely associated with more sun exposure and more UV. So do not, do not be afraid to get outside and get yourself exposed, you know, reasonably as much as you can tolerate. And as often as you can, you're going to, you're going to see benefit in all areas of your life, whether it be your mood, whether it be your energy level, and you're going to see that it will protect you to some degree from cancer. That's what I'm going to talk about today. I wanted to go over the incidence of deaths in the United States in particular. You can very likely extrapolate this to other countries that are, that are Western countries, although I don't have that data in front of me. These are the leading causes of death from cancer in the United States, the most recent up-to-date data. And we are going to dig into the next topic, which is what is cancer? Until next time.